Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our <laughs> Wednesday morning trading room. It is Wednesday today, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, hold on a second here. We'll get the screen share going on. Uh, the market opening up this morning, a bit of a brisk little rally out of the gate. Take a look here at the Eagle. You can see quite a bit going on through the overnight. A lot of big ranges. Nice little rally up there. But overall, the market's still very, very sideways. A lot of activity still. No shortage of volatility here. All right, let's throw that up on the shelf. Uh, we'll see whether uh, what we get in the way of opportunities today, or if the market's just going to be moving back and forth again. Like I, like I said, no shortage of volatility in the market right now. Okay, it looks like, well, no, it's still early. You know what? We're only a couple minutes into the session. I'm not going to get too cute with the market just yet. Why don't we let them sort things out a little bit? What, what do you say? Look at all the yellow bars here in the Hawk. Uh, the Falcon's a bit of a mess as well. The Eagle actually uh, got a little bit of a bearish look to it at the moment, but it is congesting as well. So <laughs> what are you going to do with that? Uh, we are in scalp mode for another 20 minutes, according to Trade Forecaster. We got the whole barber pole action going on here on the Raptor. So we've got ourselves in a little bit of a sideways motion. And now it looks as though we're going to get a bearish push. Okay. Like I said, we're still only a few minutes into the session. Um, question here from Keith. Uh, Keith says, uh, 
Good morning, Eric. Well, good morning, Keith. Uh, something strange happened last night, and I want to ask you about it. So I set up a trade to take a scalp, 10 ticks, and once the market got me in the trade, it moved quickly and slipped me. I get that part. But what I don't get is that it hit my profit target and didn't take all of my contracts out. As a matter of fact, it only removed one of 15 contracts and left the other 14 contracts in play. The stop loss and profit line had disappeared. Once it removed that, once it removed that contract, any idea what happened and how to avoid that from happening again? That is, that is very odd, Keith. Um, no, I don't know what happened. Because, well, when the, if you're trading the overnight, um, and I'm assuming you were following the NASDAQ, if you have 15 contracts in play, that's actually fairly substantial. But when you only filled the one contract, obviously it should have still showed the 14 open positions. Uh, you should do a little cut and paste of what you just wrote me there, Keith, and you should send it along to Adam and Ben. And just in case you guys don't have their emails, I will put that in the window for you. No, that I'm afraid I don't know what what happened to you there. Uh, obviously, it should not have done that. Uh, Keith says, could internet speed affect the entries? I was on the hotel internet. Yes, it could. Yeah, you know, if you're, um, <clears throat> when you're trading, I think you, you want the most stable and fastest connection that you can get your hands on. Uh, but again, I'm not the, I'm not the tech guy. If you haven't already noticed, I'm painfully, uh, ignorant of many things technological uh, but Ben he's a pretty smart cookie he can he can probably give you an answer to your question oh uh, here's something from Scott that I wasn't aware of. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Um, Scott says that um, that the internet in the hotel, and this makes sense because they want you to buy their movies. Uh, the internet is sometimes set up to stop data loads to keep people from streaming. Scott says he used to do hotel software years back. Every hotel is different, he says, but f fast data in a hotel, not so much. So it sounds, I don't know, um, 
Adam, like I said, Adam and uh, Ben will be able to give you an answer. If not, they will find it for you. But uh, you may want to mention your data source as well. Okay, well, yesterday's very choppy trend was up. Are we trying to move up again today? It looks that way. We're still moving a little quick here this morning. Might might take a stab at a trade, but like I said, I'm not in a real hurry to lose any money. And here we go, just kind of back and forth. Wow. 
what a tight little sideways range we have going on here this morning. Not much in the way of a trend just yet. <laughs> yeah, Scott says this needs to get in a different area. It certainly does. The sideways trading can't do much with this. Wow, there's a substantial move lower. And <laughs> that's followed by a little bit of a pullback. The signals are really developing so quickly that it's really hard to set up a trade. We may just have to punch in here with a buy or sell order as the conditions develop. After this bearish break from this sideways trading range, I think I'm going to be a little more inclined to sell than to buy. So now we have a, actually a double pullback. And I think I'm going to give this market a wide berth on the entry. Wow. How's that for a second push entry here on the number three signal? Is that just crazy or what? Right back toward the low of the day and uh, produces yet another number three signal. Coming back with a counter trend signal now. <laughs> wow, look at those ranges. That's insane. All right, I'm going to try. Can I do one of those? Whew. All right. It's a little rich, but this is a just a follow through on this number three signal. Obviously, I'm trying to stay outside of this range that's thrashing the market back and forth.
if I had this on a larger tick chart, this number three signal would look a little bit more reasonable. All right, I think I can scrub that for the moment. Especially since it looks as though the market may be reversing trend again. It's funny, it wasn't that long ago I was complaining about not enough volatility, and look at us now. Uh, now we've got more volatility than we can handle. Well, that I can handle. We're getting some pretty good signals here, but uh, of course they're all in hindsight. Which is not all that helpful. That's okay. We'll just stay with it. We're just making these really crazy swings. Looking now for a possible number three signal to develop off of this, this move right here. Back to the hard edge. And we're going to get comparable signals. Oh, here's a nice little hard edge on the eagle. Nice little hard edge move. A red bar buy signal on the eagle. A little bit of a second push. Oh, shoot, look at you go.
they're now the number three signal. I'm really going to have to place an order far away to get any kind of trade going on here this morning. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just cover above this swing high because they're blocking me from anything else. Okay, I've given them a rather wide berth, and we'll see what they do with it now. A little one and done type move would be very exciting, a nice way to trade the day. I'm going to delete my break even and see whether or not this market doesn't give me some follow through here this morning. Or if it's just going to reverse and tag me out. Come on, let me ride out this swing. Just this one swing. Looks like I got slipped three ticks on the entry as well, so the market still quite thin. I was going to try to go to break even, but I'm going to see whether I can get one more push through these highs. If we can get through the 66, 65 area, there is the chance that they may run out a little bit. Remember looking at our daily chart. Looks like we're back near yesterday's highs and a breakout above there. Well, we've got room. We could trade as high as 6,900, which is where we have uh, some more resistance coming in. Excuse me. 
Come on, one more push. Hey, they just keep stumbling at the at yesterday's highs at 66.65. Come on, somebody's going to try it. Yet another number three signal. This one's not going to print because the cloud's a little bit out of sync. Wow, we got to go. Somebody's got to try to take 66, 65, or they're going to try to run these lows. It's going to be more than a few buyers up here at 66, 65, 66, 66. getting up there and kissing it and then moving away from it all right there we go let's see if there's any follow through now okay i'll take my trade to break even there we go As volatile as the market is, parabolic stops are probably not the best stop strategy, but you know what? <laughs> Any kind of profit on a day like today. I don't anticipate hanging in for the long move here. Uh, Peter asks, uh, good morning, Eric. Speaking about high tick size, do you know what is the highest tick size you can use with DTS? Just curious, after the last three days, I'm shell-shocked, so I don't mind a range day. Um, you, can, you can use whatever size uh, you would like. 
obviously, the uh, default sizes were the ones that were settled on after a long testing period. About nine months, uh, we were working with different brick sizes and we settled on these as the defaults. The problem with a larger brick size is that it may make it impossible to take the trade, depending on your account, of course. So let's say you know you were looking at a trade like this and you wanted to cover it two swings back. Well, if your account isn't big enough, you're not going to be able to do it. So that means you're going to end up placing stops that are a little bit tighter. Oops. A little tighter just to try to get the trade on. Uh, the the good news, of course, uh, about a larger brick size is it it does take a lot of the noise out of the market. There's nothing wrong with running uh, a larger chart, like if you're only using the Raptor, for instance. It's okay to have your chart with the default tick size, and then you could run another chart maybe with a 20 tick brick just to uh, try to filter some of the noise out of the market. And use the, the larger one to give you your directionality and maybe the faster one, the default one. To give you your entries. Well, that was a decent enough little move there. And I think that might be my day <laughs> after that crazy ride. I don't know if I'm going to try another trade, although you can see that uh, we do seem to be very bullish here this morning. overall bullish. If you ran, um, I'm just thinking about the uh, Peter's question here, if you ran, say, like a 50 tick brick, what's eventually going to end up happening is your, your daybreak lines are going to show up like this. And you're just not going to have enough going on within that day that you can trade something. So that will tell you your brick sizes are too large. On a day like we've been, well, like we've been seeing the last few days, a 20 tick brick seems to condense a lot of the, uh, the a lot of the volatility. So at least you can see what's going on. But it does appear as though we are in more of a bullish trend today, at least right now for the first, oh my goodness, has it only been 45 minutes?
Yeah, I might be one and done, folks. We'll still take a look at other opportunities as they develop, but I think you're going to do better staying to the buy side. You know, when the market uh, establishes a trend, so looking at, at this move this morning, Uh, the market sideways through the overnight opens. We got a bit of a bullish rally. The sellers trying to take the market back, push it back toward the lows, and then the buyers give us this bullish breakout. When this kind of thing happens and you're looking at your chart and you need to make a decision, you need to make to decide is the market up, is it down, or is it sideways? Well, at this point, I think I would say the market is up. So buyers are actually gonna be looking for any kind of excuse to buy the market up. They're gonna be looking for reasons to get in, and those reasons run the gamut. Right? Some will be looking at 50% retracements, so they'll be looking to buy around 66, 68, 69. Um, others will be looking at a retest of a support or resistance area, which means they might be looking down here somewhere for the market to retest the 66, 65, 66 zone. My point is that even though the market may make a short-term move lower, buyers are gonna be using that as an excuse to buy. Right now, even though it looks like we've got a little bit of a topping formation going on here, right now it looks like staying on the buy side is still gonna offer you your best opportunities. So here we're getting another buy signal uh, with the recent highs right here at the 66.86 area. If you're going to look at doing something like this, I think it's important that you enter above that. Just, you know, the crazy ranges that we're looking at. You don't want to get in too early. And that's what I would say. And even even this order here is a little tight. It's only a couple of ticks above the high. could stretch that a little bit as well. And, oh, they didn't slip me that time. Stop placement uh, is gonna be important. Where's the next resistance line? Look at these zones. All right, I'm gonna place a uh, 
a profit order up here. It's very ambitious trade. No doubt I'm going to need to adjust that. These ranges are huge. And it looks like we're back in this sideways range. I'm going to delete that order for the moment just so we can better see what's going on here. Still lots of volatility, not quite as crazy as yesterday. A lot of... Um, a lot of trading over the same numbers. You can see how the market just going back and forth, back and forth. This will become a number one signal if the market rallies from here. Dan says, for some reason, my primary resistance line is at 66.86.75. My data is set at 24.5, and I just did an F5 reload. All right, so that's the primary line. And yours is reading 66.86, way up here. Well, yours is not necessarily wrong. First, let me start by saying that. Uh, secondly, uh, given how volatile the market has been uh, these last few days, it may be... Uh, your data provider. I'm using kinetic data and sometimes they only need to be a few milliseconds off of each other and the lines will calibrate differently. I know that's not what you want to hear. But like I said, it's not necessarily true that mine are correct and yours are wrong. Oh, it looks like they're going to make a run here at the low now. And they're going to, are they going to tap me out? I should be on the other side of the low of the, oh, stinkers. Couldn't get the stop out of the way fast enough. 
Oh, it looks like it wouldn't have mattered much anyhow as we make a run toward the high of the opening range. Yeah, see, Scott says his is at 66, 86, 75 as well. <clears throat> Dan says I'm using CQG data. So, it, like I say, it's not necessarily that yours is off. Mine could be the one that's not calculating correctly. Okay, well, you can see what kind of stops you need to run to try to ride out today's ranges. Just crazy, crazy stops. I think I'm going to leave well enough alone, though. Like I said, I'll I'll demo uh, some trades, but unless a really, really good opportunity presents itself. It's just going to be tough slogging again today. And you can see when the market goes. It is getting some follow through. So a nice little first micro macro cross lower there, but we did have the first micro macro cross higher here. And that of course had very little follow through to it. A first micro macro cross lower here. If you took it right on the hash mark, yes, you would have been filled. Um, hopefully your stop was above that swing high, in which case, you would have done all right with it, but yeah, just the overall volatility here. Really, really tough trading today. Here's a first micro macro cross lower again that just did not quite get to its profit objective. Still in a little bit of a pullback move, and now things getting a little bit quiet again. We're introducing more yellow bars. Oh, thanks, Julian. Julian says, Big buyers parked at 66.51. Thanks for the heads up on that.
All right, well, here we go, just back and forth. Thanks, Scott. Scott says, hang in there, Eric. here maybe Well, we're getting uh, the markets kind of back into their normal state here a little bit. Crude oil, um, I didn't realize that it was already crude inventory, but crude oil making a, a rather brisk move out of the inventory report. Here's crude oil on the Raptor, and the report released right here of early cloud crossover signal. But we actually saw some follow through. Look at them go. So we haven't seen that for a while out of crude oil. That's that's something. Okay, we've had a fairly a deep retrace here. And we're getting some some cell signals here. Actually, a late filter entry on the Falcon. And look at that. The market actually pausing a second.
<laughs> Julian says, back to the open. I think that's where we're at, aren't we? Uh, did, did the market not open around here? 66, 58 ish? <laughs> Scott says, I haven't traded yet. The one real good signal I saw, I was too weak to take. <laughs> Must have had too much weak sauce in my coffee. That's where Bailey's comes in. A little bit of Bailey's in your coffee, and you'll be taking all kinds of signals. After this uh, little bit of a pullback that we've been experiencing here, uh, I think the market may try another bullish push. If they can, if the buyers can hang on, that is. If they don't show up soon, all bets are off. Ah, okay, 66.47, Julian says, is what I show is the open. And you are correct. Soft edge buy. Oh dear, here I was teasing Scott about uh, not having the nerve to take the trade. All right, here I'll, I'll throw a single on it. This retracement, by the way, is um, what I was showing you earlier. I think we were looking at the eagle. And how we're back to uh, the prior resistance zone, which should now be acting as support for the market. And we essentially have ourselves a little bit of a sideways range now. And I'm going to stretch my break even and see if we can't run this trade a little bit. Oh, Julian says, big sellers at 66.58. All right, well, let's hope we can push through that. <laughs> And now the continuation signal, the number three signal.
Come on, get on through there. The Geiger counter actually fairly balanced uh, this morning. A lot of the uh, times we'll see the, the Geiger counter build peaks and valleys one way or the other. Come on, just give me that once. There we go. Oh, I was just about to move into my parabolics. What do we got there? So 66, 68, uh, I do believe this was the high of the opening range. Come on, give me one more push. Come on, uh, we're hesitating now at the top of the opening range because, of course, that's where the seller stepped in before. It's settling a little bit, which is nice to see. Might actually make it tradable again. After being shut out for a few days. Or shut out yesterday anyway. Crude oil continuing to slide lower. <laughs> A 
the Russell and uh, the NASDAQ pretty much in a lockstep this morning. All right, here we're coming back with yet another hard edge bounce slash uh, cloud crossover signal. And once more, I would not get too crazy um, on the entry, even though technically the second push is right here. Just as volatile as the market has been today, oh gosh, I. I'd feel better even offering up a couple of ticks before, or a couple of points, pardon me, before the entry. Because you can see these wild swings that we're making, we're breaking, breaking these signals by at least a point and then watching the market reverse. Put that away for now. The morning session almost drawing to a close. All right, here they come again. And again, this is a really drawn out number one signal. <laughs> Do I dare? Is this where the buyers regain the trend? I suppose we could bracket this as well. You could look to buy above, you could look to sell below. That is a doable trade as well. Funny how there's resistance, you know, near the the high of the opening range. And they're now the number one signal that we were anticipating. And if I were smart, I would just take my profit when I had it on this trade. See if we can push through the resistance line. And where's 6,700? That would make a very nice profit objective.
Okay, that's far enough. I'll take the trade to break even now. I hit the manual break even button. My auto break even just there for show now. And is it time to go into parabolic mode? What do we got? Come on, give me this one swing, you scoundrels. Oh, Julian's looking at 66.91 for a target. So I'm in good company. <laughs> um, you know, there's every reason to believe that they're going to try to push to 6,700. And of course, 6,800 just above that. 66.91. Is that the high this morning? It's got to be awfully close to the high this morning. All right, I wrote out the one swing, so I'm moving into parabolic mode now. Try to protect some of that open profit. And Julian says she's looking for 67, 14, three quarters. All right. Well, I didn't ride out that first swing, but given parabolics are a very aggressive stop strategy, you know, I could have gone with something a little more conservative, maybe like the chandelier strategy. You can see it's doing a very nice job of keeping you in this market. Yeah, actually the chandelier strategy working not too bad for most of the day. A lot of chop through here, but it's okay. It was a, a good trade and probably a decent way to finish off the morning. I'm not disappointed. Well, we're almost, uh, almost to the top of the hour. I'm sure there will be a few uh, three martini lunches. as traders. Break for lunch. Overall today, a very, very sideways sort of day. I don't think we're going to even see it here on the Eagle just because the amount of volatility. But we really haven't gone anywhere. Market trading back up toward the high of the day. Uh, it's actually a very tight little range here in spite of all that volatility. Okay, got a little poke through now. We'll see whether they can get up to 6,700, which was my near my target.
Stephen, a man after my own heart. <laughs> Steve says, now with the Uber, it's easy to drink and not worry about driving. That's right. Okay, well, they're slowing a little, <laughs> slowing. This is actually more the normal pace for the market. Has it finally run itself out? Are things going to get back to normal? It seems like the market's moving so terribly slow now after all that volatility. Here we go, a little bit of an uptick. And now they're stalling. Well, the way it's shaping up right now, it looks like it's going to be a long, drawn-out, sideways sort of day. I could see the sellers making one more push lower. You know that? I could see the, the sellers aren't out of it. But I do believe that we have a little bit more of a bullish day forming today. Here again, the daily chart. So a pushback to 6,800, not out of the question. Currently, we're hovering near 67. And even a move up here to 6,900, not at all unreasonable. Uh, if today remains bullish, I think tomorrow's session, Thursday's session, could be a little bit more bearish. The market rarely mo moves more than two or three days in one direction without some sort of counter move. So that'll be a little something to, to bear in mind as well. Okay, gang, I think uh, unless anyone has any questions, we'll close up shop here for the morning and we'll do it all over again tomorrow. Talk to you then. Bye for now.